Welcome back everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day today because we're reading some more Choosing Beggars. Woke up in the mood to get frustrated, and yeah, I feel like Choosing Beggars is a good place for that. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, make sure you like and subscribe, and let me know down below what you thought. And let's get into it, enjoy guys. Family wants to use my house but not honor my rules. My dad and his siblings are planning a family reunion for this summer and they want to use my house. My dad has seven siblings, eight of them in total plus spouses. I have no problem with them having a reunion at my place but several of my aunts and uncles want to exclude everybody under 50 years old and anybody with children. I asked them if that means my wife and kids and they said no because it's my house but it means my siblings and cousins who live locally. I told them it isn't a reunion if anybody's excluded. My dad agrees but three of his siblings and their spouses are saying they don't want to come if kids are going to ruin their fun. I don't know what the hell they think they're going to be doing on my farm, but I don't see how kids could ruin anything. They're going to take advantage of my hospitality. I know they expect me to cover the cost, so my home, my rule should apply. They're still complaining that kids will ruin it, and that includes their own kids and grandkids. I can't believe a couple of my aunts and uncles think they can effectively exclude 70% of the family and still call it a family reunion, and I certainly can't believe they're threatening to skip it if I invite the whole family, including their own kids. Edit, I should add my aunts and uncles are all over 70. The oldest is 90. It could be the last full reunion of their generation and the last chance to get all four generations of my uncle's family together. The oldest wants everyone so I think that should matter as it might be his last reunion. My farm is essentially a summer camp for my family and their friends. If I sent the kids home, their parents would have to find alternative childcare options. Update, my 90 year old uncle and his wife chimed in and told those who said they would skip not to threaten the rest of us with a good time. I love that man. Things are settled. Nobody is being required to attend anything they don't want to. The old farts will have 10 days here and the last weekend will be the full family reunion and they can go home early if they don't like it. It's exactly like I suggested. All that complaining over nothing. Now I need to get planning. Right, so everything resolved itself in the end. But yes, yeah, still so much unnecessary stress. And like this comment says, they want an adult vacation, not a reunion. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't even sound like they were on the same page. But yeah, shout out to your 90 year old uncle and his wife. It sounds like everything's going to be okay. Unmarried couple seeking a place to stay. Hello Craigslist users. My partner, female 42, and I, male 34, are currently living in so-and-so, but certain circumstances have forced us to seek other living arrangements. The owner of the house that we're staying in has made it clear that they're unwilling to meet a mental health need of my partner, and we do not wish to live with such an egotistical person anymore. Unfortunately, we're both unemployed at the moment. That said, we're both actively seeking employment in the local area. I myself recently applied for a position that I feel I have a good chance of getting. Regardless, we will both do our level best to not take anything for granted and to compensate anybody willing to take us in to the best of our ability. We're both self-sufficient and we don't need much. Just a place to exist without judgment or egotistical nonsense. While we get our feet underneath of us, clearly for some that's too much to ask. We're both non-smokers and we would very much prefer a non-smoking environment. As for pets, I must warn you, we may very well be so enamored with your little fur babies that we may not want to leave. Jokes aside, we are both animal lovers and in fact one of the things we'll miss most about our current living situation once it ends, are the two dogs that also live here. We currently don't have much in the way of earthly possessions, including a present lack of furniture. However, a storage unit near so-and-so currently houses the lion's share of our things. Getting those things here to this area, if not into our residence, wherever it may be, is a medium-term goal of ours, and any assistance provided towards that goal will be greatly appreciated. We look forward to meeting the one who will help us to usher in the next chapter of our lives. Thank you for taking the time to read this, and we both wish everybody well. Yeah, like the title says we're both unemployed but we expect free housing without judgment yeah that's what's happening isn't it they're both unemployed they want somewhere free to live also you're not allowed to be a smoker because you know that's definitely up to these people the ones that you're going to be doing a giant favor for the top comment says the complaints about the egotistical person they currently live with are the biggest red flags here yikes the comment under it says i'm wondering if the person is egotistical because they asked for a rent payment i'm so happy we're reading choosing beggars today scary but also also fun. Looking for a devoted Christian sister. I like to attend church at the Salvation Army in so-and-so on Tuesdays at 10am and 11am. Would like to have a down-to-earth and strong, I'm disabled, Christian sister who would accommodate and assist me at church. I would like a no-problem girl. Someone who does not get bothered to help or do what is asked of you because I need to be pushed in my wheelchair. I also might need your help to record on the phone the service and make pamphlets for the service. I have a sister in Christ who seems too busy for me nowadays and cannot seem to commit on Tuesdays 
Tuesdays for me. I would like somebody who would commit almost every Tuesday so I can go. Thank you for reading. Yeah, like the top comments say. Eh? Her personality must have been so loathsome if she's on Craigslist looking for a free helper. Instead of asking within her own church, burnt her bridges with all her physically able sisters there. And the comment under it, none of those were no problem girls. Yeah, they couldn't have been. God, that's so funny. A homeless lady begging at ATM. I walked into my bank to use the ATM and I noticed an older homeless lady sitting inside on the floor. When I was done using the ATM, she asked me if I had any money to spare. I unzipped my change purse and I was about to hand her my change, probably about four to five dollars. And she says, I just saw you pull out a 20. I stared at her completely straight faced and I walked out. What the hell though? Like actually, what the hell? Yeah, like I needed that money. There's a reason I got it out of the ATM. This comment says a literal choosing beggar. In this case, she ultimately chose zero. Hello, how are you? I hope you can help me. I need something like the one in the picture. I had it and it stopped working. My children need it. Please help me. My situation is very difficult. I cannot buy. My kids don't drink water, only with this water cooler. I don't have a car and I'm sick. My foot is broken. I can't walk much. I hope somebody will help me so that they can make my children happy by drinking water. Thank you. Yeah, like it says here, it's giving paper skin and glass bones guy from SpongeBob. Every morning I break my legs. And every afternoon I break my arms. At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. Yeah, a hundred percent like this comment says. Please, my nose fell off and my ears are behind on their truck payments and I'm sick. My sternum was broken into a hundred pieces and then put back together with radioactive Play-Doh like they did with my teeth after that boom crane incident. I need this water dispenser. I mean, like, I feel for them and I hope they're okay. But yeah, these are getting a bit ridiculous. Is the bike still available? Yeah, will you be able to pick up today? Five pounds? Yes, I'm on my way. Brilliant. Here's my address. Just so you know, I have diabetes, so traveling two miles will make me tired, and I may die. So maybe I can have the bike for free. You can deliver it to me. This is my address. Knock on the door. What? <laughs> yeah, like the top comment says, probably shouldn't be riding a bike then. Like, nah, dude, it doesn't count if I'm on a bike. I'll only die if I'm walking. As soon as I get on a bike, I can do whatever I want, and it's totally fine. That has to be the most dramatic third text I've ever seen. Like, hey, how you going? Just so you know, I can't really walk two miles and I might die. So yeah, you should definitely consider bringing it to me and for free because if not, you should feel really bad. I'm not just trying to get the bike for free by guilt tripping you. Oh no, not even a little bit. Urgent, I need a ride to so-and-so tomorrow between 1 to 3.30 p.m. St. Vincent de Paul has me scheduled to come down to do an interview for financial assistance. I also need to print financial paperwork to bring as proof for the meeting. So I'd like to go to so-and-so building to the express print and copy before we go down so I can get the copies made. That only charge five cents per page while the library charges 10 cents. Also, if you have time, I need me to hang out or wait for you to go to classes or do errands. I also need to do a Costco shopping trip, which I've been waiting since November to do since our car hasn't been working. Obviously, I'll need a ride back to so-and-so. I'm here near Walmart, but I'm all right waiting at Costco after St. Vincent's, as I said before, if you're needing to do your own errands. If I do get a ride, I'll update this post. If you see no update, I don't currently have a ride and I still need one. If you have a large truck and you live close to so-and-so, so my husband and I are in need of some manpower to move our furniture out of this apartment and into our new ground level at so-and-so apartments. Should only take one hour to load, drive and unload. Super easy. We would be thrilled to have your help any of the following dates this April. Messages with the date and time you're available. Thanks in advance. God has called our family of three to Ecuador as missionaries starting late July of this year. Many smaller churches in the area are unfortunately not able to sponsor the visa and passport and moving process, which also includes needing to build our own home shortly after we arrive. Not only this, but we'll also be teaching the local subsistence farming, which will include purchasing farm and medical equipment, livestock and construction costs, but we're not discouraged. We need financial help with sponsorship to allow us to spread the gospel in Ecuador as soon as possible. If you are that someone and or know connections who can help us, we would so appreciate your support. Please comment on this post or messages. Thank you. We need your financial assistance. We live in so-and-so and due to being forced to take two weeks off for COVID-19, my husband's work at Walmart is now refusing to pay him for two weeks of work and Walmart also fired him today. Angry face. And our extended family lives on the East Coast, so we're living by ourselves out in so-and-so, which is why I'm asking for financial help. We have an 18-month-old, barely have any food left in the house and our gas tank is just above empty and also are now overdrawn in our bank account by $100. Here's where it gets worse. My husband just got an incredible new job at so-and-so today, which pays much more than he was making, but he can't make it to his first day of work. We don't have 
enough gas money for him to drive there tomorrow. So we're missing $1,200 in our bank account and he got fired and now we can't even make it to his new job. Things could not be worse. I'm a stay at home mum and I've sold just about everything I have to make money to keep us afloat. I had nearly $300 in gift cards that I owned that I've been saving to buy my son toys and books but I've had to use this also. I don't have any other way to make more income. Driving for DoorDash is also my second job but we can't afford gas money. If you're able to assist us please send me a private message with your email so I can send a request to your email or if you want to send it to his email via PayPal it's this one. We got locked out of our Venmo account so we're unable to use that and we don't have enough gas money to drive to the food pantry. Whoa okay so how much financial assistance are we talking about? They need like a lot of money don't they? And also like this comment says teaching the local subsistence farming. What the stuff they've been doing for the last couple of thousand years? Yeah what I'm so confused. Why can't I make a video without being so confused? It's way harder than you think it is. Choosing beggars am I the a-hole nice guys? Every time I start a video I'm like you know what this is going to be super simple. I'm going to read some funny and concerning stuff but it always ends up being so confusing. And also how do you earn money with gift cards? I've got so many questions about this. It says here over the past few years she's been super demanding on our local Facebook page. These are some of the gems. Oh that's why it doesn't make any sense because it isn't one post. Oh that makes so much sense. Two of these were posted a few years ago but I cringe every time I see it so y'all can cringe with me. Well I wish I read that first. The next one says guy offers no compensation other than rent and insists that's enough. Let me know if this isn't allowed. Wanted a live in. Trade for free rent female care assistant. We need a caring, responsible, fun loving, compassionate female to be a live in home care assistant for our 89 year old mother in law. In exchange for free rent, our mother has COPD on 24 hour oxygen. We need somebody to help her get around when she needs help, prepare some home cooked meals and do her laundry. You must be home at night in case of emergency. There is family close by to help out as well. You must have a valid driver's license, physically able to carry laundry up and downstairs, looking for a clean, organized lady with a supplemental income. Sorry, but no couples, no children, well-trained, friendly pets are negotiable. In exchange for your care and your help, you'll get a private bedroom and bathroom located in the finished basement. Also in the basement, we have a small apartment refrigerator and a wet bar. The basement also has a family room and a laundry room. House cleaners come for the main level every two weeks. Please reply by telling us about yourself and why you'd be a good fit for this position. Also, what's your current living situation? Please be prepared to provide personal and work references. Thank you for reading. And apparently that got taken down almost immediately, which definitely makes sense. Like, obviously, they're in a hard situation, but you can't expect somebody to do something like this. Like this comment says, I wouldn't be interested in living in the basement with a mini fridge and wet bar for no pay and basically 24-7 care for an elderly lady that has toileting problems. Maybe I'd do it for $25 an hour. Or if I was hiding out from the law? Maybe. Yeah, and this comment. The value of women's work. Hey, do this stuff for me because I don't want to. And I'll let you live, laugh, love. If somebody can help, I'd really appreciate it. I'm not asking for food. I'm just asking if anybody has any extra pop they can part with. Preferably maybe Pepsi or Dr. Pepper or Mountain Dew. I have nothing to drink. Sad face. My baby has a gallon of milk, but I'm not sure how long it'll last. The drinks would need to be dropped off to me if it's okay because I don't have a car. My mum can't give me a ride because her car was stolen a few days ago. No, it's not a joke either. I live in so-and-so. Please and thank you and God bless. Yeah, the top comment. I really need soda because I'm out of drinks. Also, my baby is nearly out of milk. Yeah, but don't worry about that. I need Mountain Dew, okay? It's an emergency. I was gonna say, how's it a choosing beggar? But they're asking for free stuff and they're also asking to get it delivered. And most importantly, get your priorities straight. If your baby's nearly out of milk, that's probably more important than getting some Dr. Pepper. I hop choosing beggar. My husband and I are currently at IHOP enjoying Sunday breakfast. We're greeted in the parking lot with an elderly couple in their car with their car stuck in neutral and not able to get into their parking spot. Husband and I enter, couple behind us. We're seated a few tables away. Waitress greets elderly couple. They ask for one cup of coffee each. They don't want the waitress to fill up the crave. What the hell's a crave? They just want one cup of coffee each. The waitress explains that the price is for unlimited coffee and even if she doesn't fill up the crate. Oh, crate, okay. It's still $3.50 for each cup of coffee. Elderly man says that's ridiculous and he's not paying $7 for two small cups of coffee. Waitress offers to get the manager and when the manager comes over, elderly man says the same thing. $3.50 is too expensive for coffee. Manager explains that this is a chain restaurant and she can't do anything about the price. Man starts bartering saying he would only pay $1.50 for both cups of coffee. When the manager states again she cannot change the price, elderly man says fine, they don't need the coffee and they're only gonna eat because they're here but they will not be returned
returning after this meal. I'm sure IHOP is really going to be hurting with two less customers. Since writing this, I've heard them complain about how small the cheapest meal on the menu is and about the church service that they just came from. Gotta love the elderly who have no concept about how much the cost of living is. Wait, so they could have had a lot more coffee for the same price, but they only wanted one cup each? Okay, let's read one more. Hi, everybody. Does anybody have a spare GoPro or iPhone? Ideally 10s or later, gathering dust that they'd be happy to donate. After a tumultuous 2023 dealing with various life and mental health issues, I've decided to go traveling with a friend of mine. As I embark on my journey of healing and self-recovery, I want to document it all on social media, but my iPhone is broken and repairing it will cost nearly as much as getting a new one, which is beyond my budget. Any help would be much appreciated. Thank you in advance. Right, okay. Yeah, like this comment says, I'm going to suggest that their mental health issues won't be solved by seeking validation on social media. I might go as far to suggest that social media is possibly even contributing to their mental health issues. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Healing and self-recovery on social media. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I know that's not the point of the post, but yeah, sometimes stuff like that doesn't help. And I feel like that's enough for today. Time for something wholesome. My dog's too old to go on walks anymore. So my brother put it in a wheelbarrow and went around the neighborhood. Cute. And they're so happy. Oh, <laughs> it's a wonderful day and I get to see the beautiful outdoors. Such a happy dog. When you open the spaghetti jar on your first try. Yeah, that's such a good feeling. Oh my God, I'm so strong. <laughs> so unbelievably strong. I may look lonely, but I'm not. I just enjoy the company of me. Oh yeah, that's so true. That's by Cat and Cat Comics. Oh yeah, this one. Ben, I know I'm a good white shark, but I don't feel great. You're a great white shark, Kevin. Thanks, dude. I just needed to hear that today. You are a great shark, Kevin. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did, you know what to do. Make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today once again goes to Kyle. Update on the cat. She's on my bed listening to this video. Oh, that's so awesome. In the last episode, Kyle was comment of the day. Wait, sorry, did I read your name wrong? Kylea Rhodes? Sorry about that. But yeah, you had the last comment of the day saying that you got a cat and you were hoping that the cat could watch Vincy with you. And that dream came to life. That's so beautiful and I appreciate the support. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you for all the support, guys. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!